Can you tell us about your, uh, your rebranding efforts of the Cooperative Trust and how that's been going? Yep, and so it was right about a year ago, this time of year, or this time of the year, last year, um, that we decided and flipped the switch on this. And really sort of the story was, um, if you don't know, three or four years ago when we did the first crash the GAC, it was literally sort of about showing up and just wedging ourselves in and, and increasing access and ability for young people to tap into all of the expertise and all of the opportunities and networking and education that happened and the advocacy efforts that happened at this event. Um, it didn't take long because this is a really amazing industry uh, for people to sort of embrace that and so it was, the whole idea of crashing wasn't really required and so we wanted to make it was really important for us to sort of shift that from okay now we have access what's next and to shift that into okay let's be productive and let's contribute and let's build tangible concrete things as a community that are going to help build the future of the credit union system um, and so as sort of we, we made that shift in sort of our strategy and in action and how we treated the community. And we wanted to make that sort of mental shift in the way that people thought about the community and we treated the design and the brand and the name. Um, so that's why we moved from the Crash Network to the Cooperative Trust. And uh, this year, the project that they're working on is a perfect example of that. Um, they're focusing on, and on Thursday, we'll have built a prototype that's uh, a new product or service idea, and I'm not going to spoil what it is. Uh, for credit unions to serve small businesses. Um, we, uh, last summer at the ACUC, had a group that went through a similar process, um, sort of a design thinking experience where they actually interviewed people, um, took those needs and turned it into a product to help um, bring, to sort of, to fight poverty by bringing un- and underbanked people back into the financial system. Um, so that's just an example of a couple of the sort of tangible things that people in the Cooperative Trust have worked on and built as a result. I see you've kind of, it seems like you've expanded your presence at the GAC too with, uh, with sessions, um, all these sessions and everything. We have. We, we have had um, lots of great, we definitely keep the schedule packed for them. Um, and so we've had lots of great mentor sessions that are just for the crashers, um, bringing just different industry experts and minds in to have you know, intimate, open, uh, free-flowing dialogue um, about key issues. Again, like today we met with some folks from CUNY Mutual and talked about leadership and strategy. Um, and we also have been fortunate enough uh, to be, we just came out of a, one of the keynote sessions where our group was sort of integrated into the session. Uh, the session was about cooperative development, and so our group had the opportunity to sort of facilitate conversation and capture ideas at tables from people in credit unions on how credit unions might do a better job of building alliances with cooperatives in their local communities. Yeah? And then a big part of your mission is, is kind of fostering the professional development of, of young credit union professionals. Mm -hmm. um, what lessons have you learned from your efforts that might apply to credit unions, and what advice might you offer credit union leaders about kind of bringing on new uh, talented young people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Young people, and a lot of our insights have come straight out of the research that Filene has done on young people um, and what they look for in work and, and how they grow and learn. Um, you know, young people in any situation want to learn and be educated, and that's really fundamental. Want to have influence over strategy um, early on. Want to have access to top management, so mentorships are huge. Um, so we've tried to build and bake all of those things into the community and give people access to mentors um, who, if they have questions, uh, they can tap into, like Adam Schwartz from the Cooperative Way as a mentor on cooperative development. Uh, Tim McAlpine from Currency Marketing, who's behind all the young and free stuff, is behind sort of marketing and community development. George Hoffheimer from Filene uh, is also one of the mentors. And so we want to make sure that they have access to people that have been doing great work for a really long time. Um, we want to give them access. One of the things that we found is that a lot of young people working in credit unions, uh, before this was built, sort of felt like they were an island and didn't necessarily have access to other people of, that were in a similar place in their careers and of similar mindsets. So have access to other young people that are in the same place uh, to get feedback and ideas. And also to give them resources and both sometimes in the form of actual funding um, and pilot opportunities, but also just in the form of access to people and resources to, if, if somebody has an idea and they want to build it, it's as easy as saying, here's an idea, here's what it will require, who wants to help me do this thing? Um, and we've seen people in our community go and pitch an idea to the community and say, I need seven people to do this. It's going to require this out of you, and it's going to take two months. And people have said, let's go. And they've been able to prototype ideas, whereas they 
probably, I mean, the ideas when pitched to the credit union weren't necessarily embraced or, you know, ready to be brought on as a, as a full-on prototype. So give people opportunities to access expertise, each other, and to, to build things if they want to build things.